Hello, I'm Thanasis Velios and I'm going to show you how to use the Jaxfron utility to record your bindings and their condition. First of all, I'm going to start by running the XUI editor, uh, which is a Jaxfron utility that I have just downloaded from the Jaxfron website. When you run this, it should look a bit like that. I'm using a Ubuntu Linux system to run this utility, but as it's cross-platform, it would run equally well on a Windows machine or a Mac OS machine. I'm clicking on the Open a File button of the toolbar. A new window comes up and asks me two questions. The first one is to provide an XML schema. The XML schema is the file that defines the data that we need to collect for every uh, uh, book. Over here I'm using the uh, basic schema that um, we used at the St. Catherine's projects project when we were working on the printed books. This file can be downloaded from the Legato's website. Uh, the second question is for the XUI file, uh, which is the file that defines the appearance of the form, the colors, the size of the fonts, the size of the buttons, etc. Again, this file can be downloaded from the Legato's website. If I click Open, Jaxfron will read these two files. It might take a few seconds, but I can monitor the progress by looking at the bottom right corner of, the, um, of my window. The reason why it takes so long is because the uh, St. Catherine's survey form is extremely detailed and therefore there are hundreds of uh, fields that uh, need to be loaded at this stage. The files are now loaded and I can uh, uh, click under the XML schema tab to see the different types of data that I need to uh, input for um, each book. If I want to make this data um, user-friendly uh, I then need to click on the running man and that will bring the form which uh, is a lot better than uh, having the um, the uh, previous uh, uh, view of the of the data so this form is um, is very simple to use uh, on the top I've got multiple tabs each one of them corresponds to a major component of um, a bound book by clicking on uh, a field I'm now ready to type, so I'm going to give a, uh, a shelf mark MS Greek 0001. Please note at the bottom of this form, whenever I change a field, the description of what this field means changes. So in a way I've got the documentation embedded in my, in my form different information for author, differ for place of printing. So if I forget something, I can always look it up down here. I'll continue with filling in some fictional data. My title, my author, etc. I'd like to show you uh, how the um, this system can uh, correct accidental mistakes. In the opening characteristics tab, uh, there are various boxes where I'm uh, asked to type in the angle at which a book can open. Uh, we have um, agreed that the maximum uh, degrees for that angle is 180. So if I put the angle here for a stiff book, say 90 degrees, uh, the system is, um, is happy. If, however, I have made a mistake and I typed 190 degrees, which is above my maximum, the system indicates my error by drawing a red box around the field. So I know I need to go back and correct it. 180 is the maximum. Now it's happy. The next thing I'd like to show you is how the form uh, dynamically changes according to the choices of, uh, um, of the surveyor. Whenever you see NC means not checked, um, this is different than not known in that when you haven't checked a feature on a book then you can't tell what happens not because you it, it's it's Im visually impossible it's because you haven't checked it now uh, say we've checked now uh, our book for Marcus and indeed we have two 
uh, markers. One is a, a page marker series. I can collapse that to take up less space. And I'm adding another one, which is a bookmark. Now, you notice that as I change from page markers to bookmark, the options underneath that change as well. And that happens continuously throughout the form. If I change um, the type of the bookmark to simple, new questions appear that apply to simple only. The material would then be, say, a ribbon, and then the material of the ribbon would be silk. And I've gone all the way to as much detail as I wanted to define the bookmark. I'm collapsing this field and I'm going back to the page markers. Again here, I have various choices to make. I can say that this is tan skin, hence I need to define what animal and what color. I'll say red. Similarly here, page markers need to appear at a certain point in the book, either the head or the tail or the forage of the um, book. I've got say four in the forage in the in the head, and I need to add another location, which is going to be the forage. I've got lots in the forage, and instead of um, having to count all of them and waste time, the instruction box down here tells me that I can use, apart from a positive number, the word multiple, which is what I'm using. So we can see now how the form dynamically changes and how I can add multiple items uh, in the form. That was uh, an advantage when it comes to, uh, that, that's an advantage when it comes to complicated um, uh, book, book binding structures. Um, I can go on and, and fill in various fields but of course it takes a long time. Uh, instead what I'm going to do is close this form and reopen, uh, click on open again and type in uh, something in this box over here. The XML instance is the box that allows us to load an existing file, an existing bookbinding description that we have saved on our disk. Clicking the open button, I'm going on the desktop and I've got printed book 2165 from the St. Catherine's Monastery which I'm going to open and open again and this will load not only the form as we had it previously but also the specific data for that book again it takes a few seconds to load because of the detail of the form I'm clicking on the running man again and I can now see the form with the information for the specific book, book 2165. Please note that you can have um, Greek characters there as well as characters from any other language because XML is Unicode. And um, I'd like to show you how to validate this document. This document was created at the monastery and has already been validated, so I know it's correct. But for argument's sake, I'll click on this button and there's a new note appearing on the top right corner saying that the document is valid. If for some reason I had forgotten, say, to include the color of the text of the ink on in this um, uh, section, if I now try to validate and forgot about it, went back to the beginning, if I now try to validate, it tells me that the document has errors. By cl clicking on that, I have a list of errors, only one in this case. And by clicking on that, the system takes me straight away to the field where the problem exists. So I need to type here that the color of the ink is black. Validate again, and the system is now happy. Having done that, I can save the file using the same file name and now I'm ready to um, close this and restart the form for a new book mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.